GitHub CVEs, Juniper backdoors, and Subaru security finds. I'm Allie Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. Researchers have found a chain of CVEs in the GitHub desktop application that could be used to leak user credentials. Initially exploring GitHub Enterprise Server, security researcher Rio Tech shifted their focus to GitHub Desktop, where a critical issue was unearthed, dubbed clone to leak This vulnerability exploits improper handling of Git's credential protocol, allowing malicious repositories to leak user credentials. GitHub Credential Protocol uses key value pairs to retrieve credentials. However, by injecting %0D, a carriage return, into a malicious repository's submodule URL, attackers can trick Git and its credential helper into interpreting mismatched host values. For example, Git reads one host, while the helper reads another, exposing credentials to attacker-controlled servers. The vulnerability extends beyond GitHub Desktop to tools like Git Credential Manager and Git LFS, which also fail to handle these injected characters properly. In GitHub Desktop's case, the issue stems from regular expressions used in the parse credentials function, which allowed new line and carriage return characters to bypass expected validation. To mitigate the issue, GitHub and other maintainers have patched the affected tools by introducing stricter input validation and adding new configurations like credential.protect protocol to block malformed URLs. A new vulnerability was found in the Subaru ecosystem that put all drivers at risk. Luckily, upon reporting, it was patched within 24 hours. Using fuzzing, OSINT, and endpoint enumeration, hacker Sam Curry was able to find the admin portal for Subaru employees and thus see the implementation for the employee password reset. He noticed that it didn't require any external code verification. The employee security question after the reconfiguration of the password was able to be removed by just removing it from the client side code. By simply guessing an employee email, they were easily able to get into the Subaru employee portal. The portal gave over a year's worth of highly accurate information regarding the Subaru of choice, including location, and in addition, they were able to access important PII regarding owner information, as well as being able to unlock a car of choice simply from the employee portal. The only thing they needed to know to get this treasure trove of information was a victim's last name and either the zip code, email address, phone number, or license plate of the car. As a software engineer with a penchant for security, that's why I'm here, I think this hack is a little more interesting of a representation of the industry as a whole. We've seen a decline in secure coding logic being taught and thus being brought into production. I want to emphasize here that I mean secure coding logic, not insecure coding implementation. Nothing about the code was inherently insecure thanks to the many fail-safes that are implemented into languages by default. However, by deciding to not implement confirmation codes for password resets, that is a failure in the logic. This is genuinely something I do think about and I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. A new backdoor on enterprise Juniper routers has been found by the team at Lumen Technologies. How the backdoor was placed is still unknown. However, its functionality has been broken down. The backdoor dates back to at least September of 2023, dated via a sample the team found on VirusTotal. The campaign, dubbed JMagic, installed a variant of the C-Door agent to scan for packets. The passive listener monitors all incoming TCP packets looking for five specific configurations of said packets. The packets will end up containing a very specific sequence of characters and at some point the hacker IP. The actual configurations vary, intelligently so, allowing for randomness in each outreach to the infiltrated routers. To keep the reverse shell that's generated with the packets locked down, an RSA encryption key is sent to the requesting IP addresses. If the response is not as expected, it will close the reverse shell. They identified that many of the routers that were pinged with one of the activated packets were customer premise equipment, meaning that they were acting as a VPN gateway. One interesting correlation was that many of these remotely administered routers were physically located in South America, while most of the VPN gateways were in Europe. 
This could indicate that the actors are still in more of a planning slash reconnaissance phase in South America. Conversely, they have placed a greater emphasis on internet service provider and telecommunication firms in this part of the world. The team at Lumen has published indicators of compromise on their GitHub page, which we've linked to access to down below. Thank you so much for watching Threatwire for the week of January 27th, 2025. If you want to support this show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. And if you would like to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending with Allie. And as per usual, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.